How's it? How's it? The other day, I came across a post where a user had talked about how they were finding it difficult to get out there and take photographs. They asked the question of, I think, professionals about what do they do when they're just not feeling creatively inspired. They're not being motivated to take images. And this reminded me of a quote by an artist called Chuck Close. And I'm going to paraphrase it here, but he basically says that if you are waiting for inspiration to strike before you actually go off and create photographs or create art, then it's basically just never going to happen. That inspiration comes from actually doing the work. It is a wonderful experience when you're out there taking photographs and all of a sudden just the pixie dust is dropped on you and you're just, you're just like, everything is working. This is amazing. And I found that the first step to really getting that motivation back into my photography, especially when I worked at the studio and I was doing the same old pictures day in and day out for families, was to find inspiration beyond what was in my current field of awareness. Okay, so looking for photographs and, and feeling inspired, that's hardly revolutionary, but there's a twist on this. In so much as often people say, go and look at either work that's on Instagram that you really like, and then you get confronted with whatever's just popular at the time. So lots of Aurora Borealis or you know, high contrast street photographs. These are all great if that's the sort of thing that you're into, or to paraphrase Austin Paraphrase, that's my bag, baby, but that's not. And if I'm feeling unmotivated and, and really struggling with my photography, then looking at all the great photographers, the Irvin Pens and the Amadons and, and people of that nature, whose work I enjoy, I, I, I think is awesome, has, that feels too much. That, that's setting the bar quite high and, and probably just reminding me of how uh, you know, how far I've got to go or, you know, how average maybe my photography is. So that's really not a, a helpful solution either. So the, the thing lies in the middle here that we need to find photographs that either you're not overly aware of and, and have just become like a, a noise and also photography that's not overwhelming. In my own case, that comes from books like this. This is a book called The Alternative Pick, and it is basically, it's a, it's a book that used to get sent out to kind of art directors. It is a portfolio of illustrators and typographists and, and of course, photographers. This particular edition is from 1999, and it comes all the way from the Edinburgh Library of Telford College. All places, anyway, represent Edinburgh. I used to live there. It's one of my favorite cities. And what's really useful about this is that firstly, okay, we haven't really seen these images before. They haven't just been the, the, that same flood of a very similar photography. All the images are very different in their approach. I'm looking at this specifically here. So there's a, a photographer and they've got this awesome uh, little portrait thing going on, but I'm really interested in this photograph over here of a, of a billboard that it's a little bit out of focus, they're shooting it on the move. And on the, the negative or possibly on the windscreen of the car, there's all these water dots. I think it's probably on the neg. And I look at that and go, wow, that's such a cool idea. It's a fresh idea that I haven't seen in a while. This is the benefit at play here of these books. That these, these photographs at the time were, I wasn't saying groundbreaking or revolutionary, but they are of a different style. They're the mid-90s. You know, if you look at something like that, of these two ladies, it feels 90s. But there's another aspect to this, that when you look at these photographs, and this is what's especially helpful for people who are just getting started in photography, this is at this kind of weird gray area in the history of, of commercial photography, where Photoshop was around, but a lot of the imagery in here is, I use the phrase, wearing its heart on its sleeve that you can look at it and you don't have to dig through layers and layers and layers of what could be post-processing or composite work or you know, any of that stuff that we sort of take for granted these days. Nice, simple photographs. I know that, okay, this is land, uh, not landscape, this is a large format portraiture and people say, well, that's not terribly 
you know, that's not unique or what have you. I mean, it might be to you, but something in here might spark an idea. I'm looking at this. I love this kind of look. This is based on, I, I believe I get it wrong. This is an old Polaroid film that used to put in large format cameras and then peel it apart and you'd end up with these kind of really cool images that had this kind of sort of sepia-ish sort of vibe to them. There's some bleeding blacks there. That's when the blacks in the photograph kind of leach out into the lighter areas. That's also, that was such a fun, I love that kind of idea. I'd, I'd forgotten about it. That is a way of, oh look, that could be this, this, right? If you love taking pictures of your family or your kids or your grandkids and you're stuck saying, I'm not feeling inspired or something. That photographer here, I've, I, her name is Stephanie Ruzers. I, I thought she's got a squiggly font there. I can't quite read it. But these photographs here are all fun little family ideas that you pick up and you go, Turn up. that's something nice that doesn't feel like it's, it's the same old thing that we see time and time and time again. I can't highly recommend, I can't, <laughs> I can't recommend these kind of books enough. I love them. I think they're wonderful. There is, if you are into digital work, there's a lot of work in here that feels like it's something you could recreate or take an idea from. I, I absolutely adore this. This, this photographer here, uh, Bob Kari photography, his number is 602-431-0990. And he's a little lobster. Right. This, like, look at that, right? So when I was at the studio and I'm feeling uninspired, feeling, nah, I just, I'm not feeling the juice and stuff. I can look at someone like this and go, all right, I can do a personal project along something along these lines. I can look at that and go, right, I'm going to take this idea and now I'm going to run with it. That's the, the, the beauty of these things at work. They're not particularly expensive. I, if, if you know other books like this that you can look at, I see like photo yearbooks and pictures of the year or something like that, that's kind of where you find this. These are all creative photographers working in sort of the, you know, the, the commercial field. Go and look it up. Absolutely such a good idea. All right. So how does this all look when you put it into practice? In my own case, I used to love, and I still do, a photographer called Elizabeth Messina. I'm going to talk to her a little bit more, not to her, about her. I was, you know, maybe I should get hold of her. Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to talk about her work in a little bit more depth in February when we focus on natural light across the whole, the whole month. But I would look at her work. Oh God, I really like this kind of look. I was fortunate if in my studio to have a, a huge window all frosted as well. So the light was, was great coming through it that I could employ in the same sort of way. And I would go and I would take her phonographs and I would sort of try and recreate them after a fashion. And as I worked through that process, I would find that, you know, little, little snippets of, of me being able to inject something of my own would come into these photographs. I remember one particular event where I'd been doing a series of portraits using a Ikea, one of these kind of fake mosquito net drapes where it was some sort of prop to give the, you know, the, the model something to hold on to, to interact with, to make it feel a little bit more light, a bit more airy. And I was photographing one of uh, the models, her name's Lauren, who I I'd, I'd photographed a couple of times. She was great. She always like was on board with everything and, and really, you know, brought so much to the, to the, to the event of taking photographs. And I was going through the, as I say, I was going through the motions, not quite going through the motions, but you know, we're doing the shoot. I've got an idea of what I'm looking for. And I don't know why, but something out of the, out of the corner of my ear just went, Alex, why didn't you take the backdrop off the wall, put it on the floor? I was like, okay. Cause I have a, a, a painted backdrop that has in the back where it's gone through, there's like sort of motley effect uh, because I made it myself. So I put it down on the floor, got Lauren to lay on the floor and then draped this thing over her and I said, look, pretend you're like, like kind of this wayfish figurehead of a ship and something like that. And we went with it. And all of a sudden that's something I would never have considered of doing. And yet it ended up with this picture that I, I really like these photographs. I think they have a, an unusual quality to them that makes people just stop and think because the perspective is all odd from having her lie on the floor. 
I don't know why it happened, but that's inspiration at work. You can't go out saying, I'm going to be inspired today. I'm going to be inspired. I think that's the problem with so many photographers who fall into this trap of feeling like they don't want to get out there and take photos. They feel, well, rather they, they don't feel the motivation to do so because they, they think that you have to go and, and every time be inspired to, you know, to find that moment. And you can't. You, inspiration isn't something you just grab and, and smack out a thing with a hammer. It is a gentle little thing. I think about, there's this friend of mine in, in America, and she raises butterflies from little chrysalises and cocoons. And you see they come out and they're so gentle and delicate and they just flit around. And that's inspiration. That's what it feels like to me, that every now and again you'd be photographing and a, 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 that little inspiration thing would land on my finger. And you have to be very quiet. You have to be recognizing that this is the moment that you are, everything's aligning, that you're in a zone. Don't go, oh my God, now we are feeling inspired. You have to just touch it. Just relax with it. Let it work its magic. And then afterwards, you can go, oh my God, these are so good. Look at that, it's amazing. I've lost count of the number of times that I take photographs of people. And we started off and we were all like, hey, how are we do? Okay, we're going to take some pictures. That looks amazing. It's got to go. And then all of a sudden, the tone of the, the, the shoot changes. So all of a sudden, it's like, that's amazing. Just hold that. I, I start to whisper. I start to lean in. Just, just, okay, that lovely. Oh. The more that you take photographs, the more that you kind of, you get that motivation that you're sort of going, all right, I'm inspired to take photos, get up there, go and get out there. I've got some ideas to work on. I've got some inspiration that's going to help me along this path. Then the more that that inspiration fairies, lightning bolt, whatever you want to call it, is going to strike. All right. Okay. Ooh. Little slurp there of my lovely coffee. And by the way, thank you to everybody who, you know, commented on the last video about the, the slurp thing. Yes, it's, it's Keith Floyd. He was a TV chef here in the UK. He absolutely influences the way that I hope I can talk about photography that way that he, he made talking about food. So enthusiastic. It was like, it was amazing. And also, Thank you to the people who pointed out the word slurp actually comes from like 17th century Holland. So, uh, you're a donkey <laughs> with that. But be that as it may. Anyway, here's a slurp. The second idea, and it is an idea, is that you really, I, I, I feel if you want to get back on the horse of taking photographs, that you know, often people say, oh, here's some exercises you can get going with. And, and I've done that. There are exercises to train your eye to see like a photographer. And they're all very helpful. But there's a problem in them in so much as they're called exercises. I'm trying to lose weight here. My, my, my little fitness tracker. And I have to exercise. But exercise has a connotation attached to it that makes it feel like it's hard work. And if you're feeling unmotivated, if you're feeling flat, Somebody telling you you need to do some exercises is not really going to, certainly wouldn't help me, get my butt off the chair and go and take some photographs. So I think ideas, little ideas to get started with, and that's the key thing, little ideas, just to motivate you, just to do one thing. So I've got a couple that I've written down here that you could start off. Firstly, and I think this is a biddy because a lot of the times, one of the reasons why I feel, certainly I used to get bogged down of feeling unmotivated was, was worrying about creating the perfect photograph of making sure that everything was just right. And it, it became too much in my head. So an idea might be to go and take photographs that embrace imperfections. You could use a Holger, those little toy cameras. I, I got one, oh, must be sort of early 2000s and, and that absolutely revolutionized my passion for photography because it took it back to basics. But you might be more interested in, you know, sort of seeing what happens when you do push the ISO in your camera as high as it will go. 
or you know, just jumping around when you take a picture or taking pictures of things completely out of focus. That is maybe enough to kickstart you know, just a little bit of, of the drive within you again, just to get it going. I, as a, as a professional, used to have to take pictures of, of people's faces. That was, that was basically what I was doing. But what if I took portraits of people where you couldn't see their face? What if I made their faces a mask? That was an idea that I, I tried one day that, that kind of happened through just being inspired in the moment. And this, don't forget, is what exactly we are driving at here, is to be inspired, to find those moments in our photography where everything just aligns and we go, I've taken a picture that I'm really, really proud of. You could also just do something completely crazy out of left field, because that's where inspiration lies in places we would never have considered. There's a portrait here, well, a set of portraits, made some friends of mine from photo school, David Max, who it's them mucking around on a flatbed scanner of an evening, scanning their faces. I saw this online, uh, it was a couple of years ago, that this, this was made in the late 90s where somebody had done the same thing. They went, look at this amazing technique that I have discovered. It's so kind of cool. And people were like, wow, that's really amazing. Wouldn't that be cool for you to find something that you saw in a book that you kind of go, well, I'm going to take that idea that nobody else has seen before, because don't forget also there are no original ideas, mold it to something that works for me and impress the hell out of people. If you're into kind of, you know, just a little bit of ego stroking, that's a really good way of, you know, getting some positive feedback on your work, which again, helps you drive along. Chuck Close is right, that if you want to be inspired, if you want that lightning bolt to strike you, you need to be out there acting as a rod for it to be attracted towards. I know this time of year, the weather's all a bit iffy and what have you, and it, it can feel like it's a, it's a real chore to get up and go, not just for photography, but everything. But take it little steps at a time. I guarantee over the course of 2024, we're going to look at all sorts of ideas and themes within photography that is going to help you just get out there to shoot. To have those moments, those flashes of inspiration, I say maybe flash is the wrong word because we're taught in movies and stuff that it always feels like a flash. It's not. Remember the butterfly? It's often so quiet, but you need to be listening for it. If you want to get started with natural light and all that stuff, we're going to be looking at it over the course of, of the next month. Fantastic photographers who really, you know, who lean into it, how it makes differences in, in the emotions and the moods that we see in photographs how shadow plays a role, the, the great photographers who employ shadow to massively awesome effect. To get a primer on natural light and how you can best use it in your own photography, there is a live workshop on the 4th of February, which is going to introduce all the, the core concepts. If you're interested in finding out more about that, in the, the link in the description box below. To have those three exercises that train your mind, if you do want to do a bit of exercise, a bit of heavy lifting, check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching. It's been a pleasure to see you and I will talk to you soon.